Hi everyone, Spider-Man 1991 here to talk about the comics I got for the week. Okay, my only DC book for this week. Brightest Day number four. Let me show some of each story in just one, a few sentences. Hawkman and Hawkgirl enter some weird portal made up of made up of their past selves' corpses, which leads them to Pandora. Got a, if you've seen Avatar, you've got the reference. And Dead Man finally is able to be seen by someone. Unfortunately, he enters Hawk, I mean Dove's dorm room at the middle of the night while she's sleeping. Of course, while Dead Man's e easily able to explain stuff to Don, Hawk, Hawk comes in and is getting ready to punch him out. But after Dead Man tells Tells him about how he was able to bring a, a baby bird back to life and and regrow the entire area of the Star City Forest. Hawk says he has an idea of what to do with this. Oh, and there's a cameo here by the new Aqualad and a one page thing that mentions Aquaman's store. What's going on in the water for Aquaman? Meanwhile, back at the door. Meanwhile, back at Pittsburgh, Wani Raymond sleeping. All of a sudden, he sees Gehenna's spirit made out of salt. Which attacks him, but then all of a sudden bursts into salt. While we see Jason Rush sleeping with the firestorm symbol still active, which could mean he's subconsciously trying to torture Ronnie, his other half. And getting into what Hawk has planned for the white dead man's white ring, I don't want to get into that to avoid spoilers. Uh, Rise Day number four again. Everything's slow pacing, which at times it, which in this case a hook at. The hook ending was good, but otherwise, the rest of the stories, they were just slow-paced and do seem kind of like nothing's going on. If you haven't gotten it yet, then get it with trade, then wait till the trade. Okay, Marvel. Amazing Spider-Man 633. Shed has ended. While the lizard is... The story begins where we last left off. Lizard controlling the... The my the reptilian side of the human brain causing the people of New York to go crazy. Spider Man taking Connors, Kurt Connors' lizard for, uh, formula t to fight the lizard so he won't lose control. He's able to get some in the lizard, hoping to bring back Kurt Connors' psyche. But when he shows him and show him a picture of Billy, lizard is starting to lose control. A mob of people under lizard's control though still manages to attack Spider Man. But eventually, Lizard grabs Spider-Man, takes him to the building, and realizes to come that he's feeling shame for the first time and knows what it's like to be a mammal. So Lizard decides to let Spider-Man go and just head, head off into the world, with Spider-Man wondering why, what happened. Then Peter goes to talk to his Aunt May about everything, about how Kurt Connors could kill his son, while May's trying to fight off her negative side. But when Peter reveals that he, that Kurt killed Billy, it ultimately, and that he's having a hard time, it ultimately gets May Parker back to her usual self, which is good. Okay, okay, the ending to Shed, I thought it was very, very good. Uh, it, Lizard's new form and new ability seem to be a proof that all of these villains are evolving to are all evolving and giving Spider-Man a much tougher fight. And it's good to see that Aunt May finally got rid of her negative side, which was way, way back, and I can't even have a definite number of when that happened. And Amazing Spider-Man 634. Wow, two, I two consecutive issues of Amazing Spider-Man in one week. How lucky are we? <laughs> no. This was four dollars, and it was for a Craven story, and St and Spidey Sundays by Stan Lee. Mm. I'm willing to pay the extra dollar for the Spidey Sundays, not so much for the Craven extra feature. All I can say for this one is it starts Grim Hunt, where the rem remaining members of the Kravenoff family decide to get revenge on Spider-Man by kidnap by kidnapping and beating down every single character related to Peter Parker who they. Well, spider-related characters, such as Kane, Madame Web, uh, Arachne, the second Spider-Woman to appear in the Marvel Universe. And 
Ezekiel. But pretty much the crowd not found. The only big thing that happens in this issue is that... Okay, spoiler alert. They sacrifice Maddie Franklin in some sort of ritual that is a... That uses Electro's lightning in a formula developed by Fantastic Four foe Diablo to bring bar back Kraven in some sort of weird wolf form. Which makes Madame Kravnoff realize that in order to fully resurrect Kraven, they need the blood of Spider Man himself. Wow. So, Grim Hunt, um, off to a good start with a character coming back for the dead. Uh, the only thing wrong, I think, is that. Only th problem I have is, is this really going to be a big deal? This really doesn't feel like a big deal to me. I mean, Craven killed himself. I mean, it just doesn't seem like he's going to want to be brought back to life. Though, I mean, if they do resurrect him fully, he's probably going to be shocked, angry, something. Whatever. He pulled the trick, but not Spider-Man, so I honestly have no idea how this is going to resolve, but still, it was a good start. Meanwhile, in Web of Spider-Man, back to the extremist. Apparently, the extremist could read aura of people. That is a superpower. Here I was, thinking it was just something that psychics at the mall used to try to score a loose change. Well, apparently, also the extremist can turn invisible and have intangibility. Oh, and he can levitate. Which he's able to... Eat. But he's able to ult use his powers to make to grab Flash Thompson and and Peter's roommate, throw him down the five stairs for Spider-Man to see them, but he can't. So he shoots his webbing everywhere, which the cops are just furious at him for. But Spider-Man goes to talk to Cyclops about this to see if he's a mutant or not. What? But Scott reveal Cyclops reveals to him that he's not a mutant, and while he was born with it, he was part of this group called Indigo Children, which were children with indigo auras who were supposed to be the next step of human evolution, but apparently those people didn't hear of mutants. So one woman wandered her son again to Xavier's institute, but he but Xavier wouldn't, so they rejected him. And once Spider Man's able to get a name, he heads down to to Extremis' base to try to fight him, but Extremis has already left to fight Mayor Jonah Jameson. Wow. Okay. What was Spider-Man number se number nine? Um, Extremis' main plan now is he's trying to preserve heroes, make sure no one tr He's trying to raise heroes up to put them on pedestals, but he believes that in order to do that, he... In order for Spider-Man the ideal to live on, he has to kill Spider-Man the actual person. A little interesting, sure, but the whole oral reading power thing, it's just a little confusing. and Sounds kind of something out of a Pokemon movie I saw. Okay, so all I have to say here is nothing too exciting uh, out of all of these, though. Uh, nothing too exciting, really. Uh, there's just nothing for me to get... Wow! No, I, I'm not really feeling that. It, it was just pretty much either dull or maybe just a spark of excitement for en for the endings to these things. But other than that, nothing. Hopefully next week I'll have some more stuff that I'll be really happy to get. Uh, Spider-Man 1991 saying, see you later.